Yo guys, it's Vin, and today I'm going to be giving you five quick tips to immediately improve your hammer gameplay. And now, I'm going to be focusing on more objective things, such as inputs, combos, and strings, and when to use each one of them, because things like overall strategy of the weapon and conditioning take a lot longer to explain and a lot longer to learn than what is necessary for this video. So let's just get into it. The first one I want to talk about is sidelight into sidelight. Now, sidelight is a really, really fast move. Uh, you just throw this out. It's basically a wall. Um, if you dash with it, you cover a lot of ground. And keep this in mind for later. Anyway, if you're playing a high dex legend, things like um, sidelight into a dash endlight or chase dodge endlight are very consistent. However, if you're playing like Taros, it's a lot more dodge frames, and more people are going to be dodging out of this. Now, even if you miss a sidelight into endlight, you're still in a pretty good position. Endlight doesn't have many recovery frames, and just because of where sidelight sets them up, it's not the most dangerous thing in the world, especially because you're going to be using this in early health anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you miss. However, I would rather go for things like sidelight into sidelight, because again, the move is super quick and it covers so much ground. I don't need to know where this Bodvar dodge is to have faith in my ability to just cover all of it. This covers the whole ground, right? If he does a spot dodge, like this, it's so easy to react, and a lot of people don't jump that, the D-Light into Sair. It's overall very consistent, and now, if they are in later health, you don't really want to be going for a side light into side light now, because it's not going to do anything. But still, side light won't send them very far, and a lot of the, uh, the Hammer Legends have very good sticks to cover this. Taros Hammer Side Take is literally boosted side light. Alright guys, my second tip is to spam Nair. And when I say spam Nair, I literally mean spam Nair. You can drift with this move, it has a huge hitbox, it hits grounded, it has strings, we'll get into the strings later. However, I just want you to know that Nair is incredibly safe to throw out, especially if they're already in a juggle situation. Let's say you D-Light Dare them, now you can pressure them with your Nairs. And, and now although I say spam Nair, there is a better way to use Nair than just spamming it every time you can. And now this kind of delves into the realm of conditioning and strategy or whatever, but I think it's pretty easy to understand, so we'll talk about it in this video. Nair is something that when you, it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent, right? You jump and you Nair, you jump and you Nair. And this is going to hit a few times in the beginning, right? But after a certain while, if your opponent has a brain, they're going to be dodging it. <laughs> they're going to be jumping out of it right when they see you jump. They're going to be dodging this way. They're going to be, uh, I don't know, using the recovery, whatever. Basically, you can use this to your advantage. You train them to think that you're going to jump Nair, and the next time, you jump and fast fall. And now, since I fast fell back down to this platform, I have all my options again. But since my opponent has been thinking I'm going to do a jump Nair every time, they use a jump. And then I do it again, they use another jump. And now guess what? Now they're out of jumps. Now they have to return to the ground. And basically, what you can do is you can mix up jump nares, jump fast fall, jump nair, jump fast fall. And you do this over and over again through the match, so your opponent, uh, you're always keeping them on their toes. They're always guessing what you're going to do, and they burn their options for no reason. And now that they have no options, they have to come back down to the ground, and this is when you really use your nair. And you can just keep applying pressure by Nair into Nair. Of course, if they go other ways, you can use Sair, but overall, Nair is the best move you want to be using because you can drift it, it has, it's huge. And this brings me to my next point, which is using GC Stomp combos. Now, GC Stomp is a very good move on the kit because, you know, it hits really low, so you can use it really high up and just and has a Nair true combo follow-up. Now, I see a lot of people doing things like it, including me, they miss a move and then they jump into a GC stomp. Now, in my opinion, this isn't like a bad option really because a lot of people, once you miss your side light, a lot of people will try to punish you so you can go for this. But in higher elos, no one's going to fall for it. And now that you've burned your dodge, they're just going to punish you hard. You already have a hard time against Gauntlets and Katars. You don't need to make it any harder for yourself. Now, the best way, in my opinion, to use GC stomp is when you're already in the air and you know your opponent is going to commit to an attack. Let's say you're in that position where you're in the air, you're running out of options, and you're falling back down to the ground. You see your opponent try to punish you, and you see them in active frames. They're already committing to, let's say, their dash jump Sarah, right? All you have to do is dodge it and then cancel into a stomp. And now you've dodged the move, now you get a true combo follow-up, and you send them into the air, and now you can keep applying pressure with your Nairs like I did, like we talked about in the second tip. And now there are other GC Stomp combos that you want to learn besides just GC Stomp Nair. 
If you hit it too close to the ground, you want to be doing a GC stomp into a jump reverse dare, like this. I can't, okay, maybe I can, but it's a little bit hard, depending on where you hit it, to get that nair follow-up. Sometimes you're going to be getting like an end light like that, right? If you're on the edge, what you can do is, let's pretend the Bodvar's on the edge, sorry, I'm a little lazy, and I, I wanna keep the momentum going, right? So, I hit a stomp like over here. I think it's better to do a chase dodge recovery be, instead of a nair. Because if I, joke, I give them the nair, of course they're in the air, but now they have the freedom to kind of land wherever they want. In my opinion, it's a little bit easier to fight them if you do a GC stomp into a recovery to send them off on the edge. And this is a little bit harder because you're not going to be giving many opportunities to use a GC stomp at the edge like this, but it's, it's just there. It's just food for thought. If you do hit it, send them off stage with recovery and now you can edge guard them. And now this also segues into my next tip, which is using your recoveries better. Now, recovery is one of the best moves on Hammer's Kit, undoubtedly. It's a free spike. If you hit it, it just throws them downwards. Now, a lot of people don't know that in early health, this probably will pro still probably work at 50, but if I go down to 30 just to be safe, I hit a Nair, right? Oops. I hit a Nair into a reverse recovery into a B bat of the game. Okay, basically if they use their dodge, you can hit them with a falling Nair into a jump, turn around recovery, into a turn around or chase dodge down, then turn around again dare. I'm only reusing the frame step because for some reason I can't hit this in training mode, but I can hit it in real game. Anyway, that's not the point. Hopefully you guys can be better hammer players than me. This is a 60 damage-ish confirm. It's not, not many people use it, at least from what I see, but you definitely need to start. You're going to be hitting so many falling nears anyway, you might as well be able to maximize your damage. Again, this is all confirmed. Another great way to use hammer recoveries is, of course, off stage, but you gotta know which way to face. Pretty much all the time, you want to be facing away from the wall, because to cover the wall, that is, because if you look at this, the hitbox comes out behind you, right? And it's just like a jump dare. We'll, we'll talk about dare in a second. Uh, spoiler alert, that's the fifth tip. But the hitbox comes out behind you. So basically, if you turn around, you can cover the, you can cover the wall. And this is an immediate spike, and especially on maps like Crystal Temple or Demon Island, this is almost a guaranteed edge guard. Not to mention, if someone is standing on the edge like this, you can use a recovery like that, and it will immediately spike them downwards and reverse the edge guard, which is amazing. Another thing you can use with the recoveries is using exhaustor recoveries. Now, this is a little bit harder to judge because um, it's, it takes a lot of experience to know when to use a jump recovery versus or a recovery instead of a jump nair. Because remember, if you're coming back to the stage, jump nair is a really, really good at covering yourself. But if you see the opportunity and your opponent isn't expecting you, right, you use your recovery, then use a second recovery. It has a lot of momentum, right? You have a lot of drift like this, so it's pretty easy to hit in that regard, but it's just knowing when to use it. I can't really explain to you there. Uh, that just comes down to experience. Okay, guys, my fifth and final tip for the video is using dare. Dare, just like recovery, hits behind you. And now everybody says, for blasters players, every blaster player likes to jump dare, right? Everybody knows that. You, you da they dash up to you and then they jump dare. You run up to them, doesn't matter, they jump dare. You can do the same exact thing on hammer, except all you have to do is reverse it since it comes out behind you. Now the thing is with hammer though, your grounded kit, unlike blasters, is extremely fast and extremely safe. So this is not something you wanna be going for every single time, but what's different about this is that, so of course, your moves are really fast, right? Your end light, your side light, and your D light, really good for covering grounded. However, if you see your opponent going to do something like a sword side light, and they beat you to the punch, they put out their move before you, and you don't have enough time to react, you just jump dare. Not to mention, if they do any type of like aerial attack, this jump dare will catch in places that the end light won't catch. Um, dare is also really good because again, everything on hammer strings into nair at some point, I swear. So like, Again, it, it comes back to Nair. I know I'm supposed to be talking about Dare, but you know, I, I can never avoid talking about Nair in a Hammer video. Um, another good place to use Dare is with dash jumps. Again, in the same place, if you want to mix up, if you feel like your opponent is threatening you, you dash jump over them and you Dare. Uh, another good place to use Dares is with X pivots. Now this is a little bit safer than um, X, regular dash jump because it sends you back. But in my opinion, it's better to be using this more off stage because again, if you're on stage and you're dash jump daring, you're probably going to catch them if you know. This is only something you you do if you know your opponent's gonna stand there, 
So it's pretty safe in my opinion. If you want to be using an X pivot dare, I would recommend using it off the stage like this, kind of scooping them up. This is really good because it keeps you on the stage so you maintain stage control. If you miss, you can do an end light right after. Although some people, more better, more experienced players will be able to punish that, so I wouldn't go for that all the time. But if you're fighting someone who's sharking a lot, this is really good for just scooping them off the wall, and now you can put pressure on them. Anyway guys, that's pretty much all I had to say. I, there's probably stuff I left out that I could have said, but for the sake of making the title sound good, five tips, you know, it's, it's a nice neat number. These are some of the best things I could think of. Let me know in the comments if, if you have more you want to add on. I'm always open for discussion. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys next time.